I finished my sketchbook last week, and now that means I finally get to start a new one. But this time, I wanted to get a different kind of sketchbook than the ones I usually get for my art. For those who are just tuning in or don't know in general, I usually use a marker sketchbook because marker is my main medium, so it makes sense that I'm getting paper specified to that, but sometimes I do want to play with other mediums in my sketchbook. So that's why this time I went with the Artex number 218 Waku Waku Sketch Media Pad. That is a mouthful, and I really hope I said Waku Waku right. <laughs> my number one worry when it came to buying a sketch pad, or any pad sketchbook things in general, is that the papers will eventually fall out because they're attached to the binding at the top. But when I opened the book, a message was there. It says the exposed binding is a special design for easily laying flat during painting. This is not a damaging phenomenon. You can paint on both sides of the paper. And I thought this was the most like fucking big brain genius thing I have ever seen in my entire life. I honestly have no idea if this has been done before with sketchbooks, but I, I love it. The fact that I could lay it flat and that it's it's not gonna like rip off easy is is awesome to me. I always hate the glue paper on binding thing. It always makes me so mad, but this this is awesome. I love this. The sketchbook is 7 inches by 7 inches or 180 millimeters by 180 millimeters, has 36 sheets, um, is also 162 pound paper or 240 GSM, which means it's really thick, and has a cardboard backing to it, I guess to help with being sturdy, which I appreciate that very much. Also, I want to say that, like, okay, this is weird, but the sketchbook is really welcoming because it says may you know joy with me and that like that felt really like heartwarming to me so i really liked that little thing about the sketchbook i don't know it was cute you know now with the introductories of the sketchbook out of the way we can go ahead and talk about how the sketchbook did with some tests of course the first thing i tested out was some marker and the way they blended with each other and i think that they did pretty well especially when it came to colors that were similar colors that were a little different from each other though weren't too bad especially if i just kept blending back and forth i did notice however that the colors did lay down a little bit darker than what they originally were which i don't mind because it's just a little darker it's not like horribly dark but what i did like about the markers is that they were left really bright on the page and i thought that that was really nice I did test some color pencils, both Crayola and Prismacolor, and they layered pretty nicely on the paper and showed up pretty nicely on top of the markers. The one thing that I did have the most trouble with, however, was definitely the inking. Because the paper is so thick, the ink takes forever to absorb, and even when it does, it's still not fully dry. So I was thinking that I might have to change the way I do my art for this book, and I'll explain what I mean by that in a bit. Little things like the pens, the sharpies, the pilot color Eno, and the Prismacolor Color Race weren't bad, although I did notice that the Prismacolor Color Race did leave a bit of an indent, but that's probably because I press really hard whenever I sketch, and that's a bad habit, but that's just what I do, so that's a note for you heavy handers out there like me. Crayola markers, as usual, did tear up the paper a bit, but that's just because it's Crayola, honestly, it's not the paper. <laughs> Finally, the last thing that I'm most likely to use in a sketchbook is the Posca pens. They did pretty alright on the paper, however they did warp it a little bit, so I don't know how well this fares with watercolor and gouache and stuff like that, but we'll definitely figure that out down the line when I start doing that in this sketchbook. So after about an hour or so of just messing around with the markers and the inks and seeing how they lay down on the paper, I went ahead and sketched up the first sketchbook page. I decided on using my OC Rose, which is Nikki's twin brother, sitting on a stool and kind of has like that showbiz outfit kind of thing going on. I'll put up a picture right now so you could see what I'm talking about. And he's using the cane to kind of point at the words that say welcome to the show. And it's going to be kind of like he's on the stage and the yellow spotlight is pointed onto him. So I kind of wanted it to be like almost like a, a old Hollywood kind of thing introductory to the sketchbook which I usually don't do but I thought it was nice because number one I have the room <laughs> to do something like this so I'm taking advantage of it by doing you know the whole body pose and everything which is honestly a nice change of pace and because I've just never done something like this before so I thought it would be you know fun okay so um 
Remember how earlier I said that I had to change the way I did my art for this sketchbook? So I have to actually go back to what I used to do way back when I started using markers and doing marker art is I would have to color in the character first and then go ahead and ink on top. The reason why I did that when I first started was because I didn't know how to color in properly without smudging the ink and everything, so it was kind of like a precautionary measure, so this way I wouldn't mess up the drawing. Now I do it ink then color because I'm comfortable with it and it's something easy to do and I've just gotten used to it. But with this sketchbook, like I said previously, the ink sits so long in the page that if I take my marker and just brush up against it, it will 100% smudge. And I even tested this with a drawing that I let dry for a whole 24 hours, well, the ink, before I went in with color and it still ended up smudging pretty bad. And I was like, okay, that's kind of like the downside of this book is that the ink for inking sits a little too long, but it's a good thing when it comes to markers because that means that you have more room to blend and it gives you which also means giving you smoother blends and ultimately using less ink than you would have to compared to other books. So ultimately when it comes to inking I had to make the choice of switching up the way I do things just so I can adjust to my art material which isn't the first time I've done something like this. If I ever have an art material or an art supply that doesn't fit how I normally do things I always find a way to work around it especially if I've already bought it and spent the money on it and i'm like nah we're not wasting that money so i figure out a way and i think that's what like a lot of artists have to do too and i usually stick it through unless it's truly like hindering the process of me creating art but, like when i was using the render sketchbook the that was just it was not working with me and it was like i was having a really difficult time blending and my patience was wearing thin with the sketchbook so i was like okay, we're just gonna drop this. And that was the first ever sketchbook I genuinely dropped because I was having such a hard time with it. And I had the ability to do that, you know, and not everybody has the ability to just drop the supply that they got. But when I was younger, there was no way I could have just dropped it. I would have had to push through the whole book, but I'm grown now and like, you know, I have adult money, so yay, <laughs> I can just get the other thing that I want instead. But that's like only a last ditch effort, and it, like I said, it only ever happened one time previously, so for the most part, I just use whatever supply I have and then work my way around it. When it came to coloring in rows over here, there were some parts that were harder to color in because they would get lost with the Prismacolor Color Race. Now, the Prismacolor Color Race blends in with the marker if you color over it. So some parts I actually had to go in and line right after I colored it or like in the middle of coloring it just so I wouldn't lose how it looked like before the time comes to where I have to ink it. I think to help avoid that problem in the future, what I'll do is I'll take the Prismacolor Color Race or whatever I'm using and I'll take the final sketch of the character and then I'll darken it in a little bit so this way I don't lose the character midway through the drawing because you know you work hard on your sketch and you don't want it to look different from what you originally had because you start to lose the parts in the middle of the drawing you know what i'm saying that would kind of suck so i think that's just something i have to get used to again because i used to you know have a grip on that way back when i did color then inking first so yeah i'll get it eventually it'll come naturally soon enough when it came to coloring in the spotlight or the background, looking at it now, I kind of wish I did it differently. I feel like a spotlight is much more of a direct circle, even if it's like blaring onto somebody on the stage or something. So it looking kind of like jagged and like out of place in some parts, if you know what I'm saying, like at the top left corner specifically, it looks like messy in comparison to what I would like it to be uh, next time if I ever work with a spotlight again, which I don't know if that will <laughs> ever happen, I have no idea. Um, I will definitely do a harsh yellow circle that does blend out because this one does blend out to a degree and I liked the way that it did that. But I will also just do a harsh black background circular thing around it so this way it looks a little bit more um, neat, you know what I mean? Okay. 
Now we finally made it to the inking process. I did go ahead and do the eyes off of the camera because I really didn't want to mess those up. And I kind of wish I did the same thing for the lips because I did <laughs> mess those up. But because I was planning on doing some uh, lipstick or like some kind of color on the lip of the character, I wasn't too mad at that anyway because I knew it would just blend out with the marker, especially because this paper very aggressively likes to blend in with the ink. So I was like, okay, it'll be fine anyway. But next time I might just do the face off of the camera just so any precautions like not any precautions uh any any mishaps man i'm using too many too many big words recently i'm, I'm, tr I'm trying to be smart but it, it's just not working <laughs> i'm trying to avoid any mistakes basically and next time i'll just do the face just straight up so this way i don't you know fuck up anything when it came to inking, I used the usual 0.3 liner, but in order to make the character stand out a little bit more, I went back in with a 0.5 liner, which means, you know, the bigger the liner, the more the, the character seems like up front, if that makes any sense. Sometimes the thicker the line art, the more the eye goes towards it, which means that that's going to be the first thing you're looking at. So I made sure to outline him with some thicker line art to help push that he is the forefront of the drawing because there is a lot going on but at the same time you know he is the main part of it so I don't think I should have worried about it that much but the line variation is still nice regardless. For the welcome to the show little text that was on the top right I felt like the best color to do it in would be red just because I didn't want to keep adding on more colors to the piece plus I feel like Red would be the standout color if it's coming to like a sign and uh, after I inked it I went ahead and did like a 3D effect to it kind of like it's popping up forward which I felt like helped a lot with it standing out because although I lined it and everything I felt like it still wasn't it wasn't pushing through enough for me so I was like okay let's try and make it pop a little bit more and I really feel like just doing something as simple as adding those black lines behind the letters really helped do that. Finally, after I colored in everything and lined everything the way I wanted it to, the most important part was going to be coming up and I was like, okay, this is what's going to make the piece stand out because although I like it and it's really cool, it's definitely missing a lot of sparkle. And what I did was I took my white gel pen and of course I went around the areas of the face and the lips like usual and I gave whatever needed a highlight a highlight but I really wanted his suit to be like all sparkles and I just feel like it helps like push his character through a little bit more because he is very gaudy and I think that it suited him really well and he looks so happy in his suit and I added those really big sparkles to kind of show that this is a really shiny suit and the light hitting it is like making a nice reflection off of it and everything and I really like the way this ended up coming out uh, I'm, I'm actually really proud of it. I haven't done something that I was like really excited while drawing it in a long time. Although I really love my drawings and everything, this one right here really helped me, you know, in a cool way. And I honestly can't wait to do more drawings in this sketchbook. So far for the first impressions that I did, I really like how this paper is and I like how it lays down everything. And genuinely, it's really bright and almost looks printed. I hope you'll be there for the rest of this journey for the sketchbook. So yeah, thanks for watching and remember I love you. Bye.